today. Chris here, Red Ellen 140. Hello. Um, I've got a beer from Op. No, sorry, from the Demoulin Brewery. Um, you have to excuse pronunciation again. Um, this is their Op and Top. Um, so it's uh, well, not much in terms of description of the style of beer. I haven't looked it up on the net, so I'm doing this blind. Um, what it does say on here, uh, ingredients, water, pale and carb, barley malts, um, sladek, which is a bitter and hop, and amarillo, which late hopping, and top fermenting yeast. So I'm guessing it's going to be quite a hoppy beast. Um, oh, it's also got an EBU on there, um, which is 30. So, so it should be a uh, relatively, relatively uh, hoppy. I would imagine an amarillo give that, give that kind of a layered taste. I think <coughs> that's a. I do like the labels on these again, very plain. I do like a plain label on a beer. Um, that's the open top part on there. Let's crack it open. I've had one of their beers before, um, which was nice. Balance of that. Okay, so got one finger head. Uh, nice, nice. Well, maybe two fingers actually. Uh, I'm getting the the hops from from this distance, just from the pour. Um, very nice it is too. Okay. So appearance. Uh, it's a uh, it's an amber color. I would suggest. Uh, in terms of movement, plenty going on, feeding that head, and then they're escaping up the side of the glass. Uh, the nose. Oh, there's a lovely, fresh smelling hop in there, um, and that's got to be the Amarillo, given that um, very distinctive, highly fruity, and quite tropical fruit almost um, hit on the nose there it's not overpowering and the more you have the more you smell it the less you pick up almost but uh, not massively different to the some of the Buxton beers actually how this smells yeah yeah, quite similar to, to the uh, Wild Boar, I think. So I'm looking forward to this now. Because um, that's one of my favorite, well, that is my favourite beer of the moment. This is May 2012. Um, that may change, of course, in the future. But at the moment, that's winning. So let's get into this and see what we think of it. Cheers. this coming up? Alright, okay, it's 4.5%. The bubbles, although they look smaller than the glass, they're quite, um, quite coarse in the mouthfeel. So, um, almost like the difference between, you know when you get that really fancy fizzy water, um, you know, you're thinking Perrier or um, what's that fizzy water we like, love? Um, I can't remember. Uh, the San Benedetto, San yeah, Benedetto, yeah, yeah. one of those things. It's, you get you get those kind of fancier fizzy waters that have you know quite a small bubble. This is more like when you get the kind of bog standard fizzy water from the supermarket in terms of how it fills in the mouth. Um, so that's what I mean by coarseness of bubbles. I think they feel like they're quite rough. Almost like a, a cat is licking your tongue. <laughs> you know what I meant if you if you tried this. Uh, I've never had a cat lick my tongue. Well, you've had one lick your hand. I haven't had a cat lick my tongue, just to be clear. Um, Are you but sure? As far as I remember, um, 
Oh, there was one. No. Um, yeah. So in the mouth film, actually, it's a lovely um, as well as well as that roughness of the bubbles. It's a really great quality water feel as well. Really, really lovely. Mm. In terms of the taste, it's um, touch of grapefruit, touch of pineapple. I mean, it's, it's in the tropical end of things. Um, let's go for that again. <coughs> Excuse me. Quite fizzy, maybe burp. Um, It's a veritable fruit salad of, of tastes that. Um, not overly sweet. Actually really very bitter on the end. So they've used this sladek. I've not come across that as a, a list of ingredients before. Um, but I, I like it. I like sladek. Or sladek. I don't know how they say it. Um, hmm. This is good. I'm going to drink some more. You almost don't get much of a chance to get lots of the taste in your mouth because those bitter, those bubbles are so harsh. You kind of can't leave it in your mouth for very long because it, it would start, it feels like it would start attacking your face almost. Um, that's, that's the main criticism I, had, I would have of this. It's great on the nose. When you do get the taste, that's that's cracking. Um, there is a sister. That's the wrong way to express it. There's a, there's another kind of hit of in the nose now. Now that I can get my nose into the actual glass, and I'm not just sniffing the head. That. Excuse me. You pick up that slight yeasty smell. That slight, like a, a something in a bun. Yeah. Um, of course, the your definition of bun differs as to where you are in the country, I suppose. But I'm I'm thinking of relatively sweet buns, not hot cross, but something in in, in that kind of area. And that's there's a little touch of that on the nose as well, and the. That sweeter, hoppy smell is, is dissipating quite quickly, which is a shame. And, the, like I've touched on before, the when you kind of if you can find, find a force the bubbles to go away. You're left with what feels like a very, very soft water um, that this beer is made with. What is it? Did it say? It just says water. Um, I don't know what the water's like in Holland. Probably Dutch. Okay, where would I want to drink this? Um, well, it's 4.5%. It's relatively light. Um, you could probably sink a good few of these. Um, the 330, is that necessary? I've seen De Molen beers in bigger bottles before. I, I think this would happily withstand a, a, a 500 mil. Um, and I'd like to get in and, and maybe have a pint of this one day. Um, I'd certainly like to try on cask because I think it would probably lose some of that kind of very overt fizziness, um, which might enhance the <coughs> flavour a little bit. Mm. Okay. So I'll have to add this to my list of places to go. You can go and visit the De Moulin Brewery. Uh, they do it every Saturday, tour and tasting. Um, www.brewerydemoulin.nl um, You can check it out. Just check out De Moulin. I'm not going to spell out the whole thing for you. Okay, so I'd like to try this. This, is, this for me is a beer that I would like to try in the pub. Um, maybe at some kind of festival. Or, but, uh, oh, I know where I'd like to drink it. At some kind of poncy, artsy cinema kind of place. 
maybe watch a French film after it. I don't know. Anyway, uh, a rated. Good, tasty. Uh, could deliver a little bit more, but um, I can't really fault it. I'm going to go with an 8. Yeah, it's, it's not bad, um, but certainly not in that top end. And there, there are beers that carry some of those same flavours that carry them better. So, well done, Damola, with an 8. Uh, I'll catch you up soon, and cheers.